Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. Recently, I had the slightly crazy idea to make a longboard on my Shaboko that I would eventually call the Carbide Cruiser. Not only would this project be a really good stress test for the Shaboko platform and our new Carbide Compact Router, but it would also just be a really darn cool project. Over the next few videos from this longboard series, I'll be going over how I brought this project to life, from just an idea through CAD, CAM, machining, secondary finishing, and integration to become a rideable longboard that looks just as remarkable on the street as it does on a desktop CNC. But let's take things one step at a time. How did the design for the Carbide Cruiser come about? The constraints around longboard designs are lenient enough that it can be a great open-ended creative exercise. The size, shape, hardware, and comfort can all be tailored to whatever you want, though you still have to work within certain constraints like using standardized hole patterns for bolting on trucks or picking comfortable overall dimensions for a board that aren't too wide or too long. But aesthetically, you have infinite variability to create something that's a reflection on your own tastes. A longboard is a blank canvas for both technical and artistic expression. Traditionally, skateboards and longboards are made from laminated sheets of hard maple. But just to up the ante, I'd make this one out of aluminum to really exercise the limits of the Shaboko, both from a size and material perspective. It's not the ideal material because the rigidity of aluminum can make the ride quality a bit harsh, but this is more about looking cool than being comfortable. Besides the material, in my mind a big part of the cool factor comes from the shape of a longboard. There are a variety of designs out there tailored for different styles of riding. I picked a pintail shape primarily for aesthetics because I like that teardrop profile, but I also wanted to put a kicktail on my board because I thought breaking a board's profile into the third dimension would make it look more visually interesting and pose a greater machining challenge. If I were to mill this board from a solid piece of aluminum though, I would need to start from a block of material that was as thick as the kicktail is tall. Not only is that a massive waste of material, but it would also take literally days of machining to get through on the Shaboko. It would be much smarter to manufacture the board in two parts, the deck and the kicktail, and size the stock for each one appropriately. To figure out what kind of stock I would need though, I first had to have a design, so I fired up Fusion 360 and got to work. The first step was to define my profile. Using a spline curve with as few control points as possible, I drew out the overall shape of the board I wanted. I mirrored this across the x-axis to create a closed sketch. I made sure I had control points at the nose, my desired widest point, and the back of the tail. This way I could enforce angle constraints and control how sharp or rounded the board was at each point. Next I extruded the shape out and added through holes for mounting the longboard trucks. I added material above the aft end and trimmed it to become the kicktail. After blending that into the deck I then patterned a texture across the face of the deck. I made sure to throw a ton of fillets in this pattern so that an end mill wouldn't have to try and fit into really tight corners. On the bottom side, I knew I would be centering the design around the Carbide 3D logo. I recessed away everything except the face of the logo and the structural loop around the perimeter of the board. Between them, I used pattern lines to add material for strength and to also direct the eyes towards the focal point of the design which is the Carbide 3D logo. I then split the body along a construction plane and formed the interface between the deck and the tail. I made sure to generously apply fillets and chamfers to break all my edges so that this piece wouldn't feel too sharp in hand. And finally, with my heart set on this design, I needed material. But right here, there's a problem. Where can we get a large piece of aluminum to machine a longboard deck from? It's not like you can drive over to the hardware store and pick up a bar of this stuff. McMaster is a common go-to for engineering materials and hardware, but they are a middleman. There's going to be a markup for anything you buy there. Plus, shipping is going to tack on a fair amount if you live far away from a distribution center. If you live near a metal supplier, it doesn't hurt to give them a call and ask if they have the material you want. They can also cut bar stock to custom lengths for you so it'll fit nicely on your machine, instead of having to buy in 12 inch increments and sawing away at it yourself once you get home. The aluminum I got was conveniently cut to 32 inch increments. Oftentimes, particularly for large pieces of raw materials, a local vendor is the best way to go. And if you're going to be buying a lot more material in the future, it can pay off to develop a good working relationship with them. I had four lengths of 32 inches of aluminum cut, and since bar stock comes in 12 foot lengths, there was a 15-ish inch piece of bar stock left over that got thrown in for free with this order. You don't get that kind of service online. So, with the design and material acquisition phases done, we're in good shape to begin the next phase of the project, which is generating toolpaths. But that and more are going to have to wait for the next episode. Until then, thanks for checking out the first installment of the Carbide 3D Longboard Saga, and hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss the next episode of the Carbide Cruiser series. 
Good luck with your own projects and have fun machining, folks.